Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from Gadigal Land. This is ABC News Daily. When you cruise the aisles at the supermarket, you would have noticed almost everything is more expensive. Coles and Woolies blame inflation. But is that really all that's at play? Today, the ABC's business editor, Ian Verinder, on why company profits are soaring while households struggle to make ends meet. Ian, when I do my weekly shop, which I don't find that pleasant actually, but anyway, that's another story. (laughs) I really have noticed though that prices are creeping up on almost everything. It seems like everything's gone up by about a dollar, in some cases, two dollars. Oh, absolutely. Um, You know, prices are going up across the board really and for a range of factors. I mean, you know, it all started, I guess, with the bounce back from the uh, from the pandemic and everybody decided to go out and everybody, you know, decided to spend more money. And then, of course, uh, after that bounce back and we had shortages of materials coming in from overseas, everything was compounded by the war in Ukraine, which sent energy prices soaring and uh, really did disrupt a lot of global trade and made the whole situation even worse. Mm. But, you know, for a long time, we thought it was just going to be a transitory kind of phase and everything would settle back to, to normal. But it's taking a lot longer to settle back to normal than uh, anybody really anticipated. Mm, in fact, it feels like it just keeps getting worse. New figures show inflation is easing to 7.4% in the year to January, down from 8.4% in the year to December. Though there were still big price rises in housing from higher rents and mortgage repayments. And food prices rose by 8 Australians understand that a lot of this inflation is coming at us from around the world and they understand that broken supply chains here in Australia have been part of the problem as well. So is it just those inflationary pressures that you've talked about that's causing this? I mean, that's what we're told. It's because of inflation. When inflation comes down, we'll all be better off. But is that the only thing that's going on here? Well, not really, because, I mean, there's no doubt that there are inflationary pressures all around the world. And we're feeling the pinch here, just like everybody else. But we're a little bit unique here Mm. in that... uh, we're we're a big country with a fairly small population. And so as a result of that, we've got a lot of industries that are really just dominated by a couple of major players. So, you know, instead of the classical definition of a, of a free market where you've got uh, many buyers and many sellers, we've got a situation here where we've got many buyers, but uh, in a lot of industries, and you go through things like, uh, you know, the airlines, brewers, mm. steel makers, resource giants, even the banks. I mean, we've got four banks, mm. but they really would like to merge down into two. But we've got so many industries that are dominated by a pair of big companies. Mm, So we've got the Coles and the Woolworths, and there's a few others, of course, but they're the big ones, aren't they? Yeah, and what happens there is that gives them quite a bit of power Mm. in how they can price their their goods and services to us because, you know, normally in a free market democratic nation, uh, you know, you go out there and you you make stuff and you try and sell it to people, but, you know, your price is really determined by the supply and the demands of goods. That's, you know, neoclassical economic theory. Mm. But if you're one of just two major players, that gives you a big leg up in the uh, in the power stakes, and so you do have the power then to actually determine what price you're you're going to charge. And so, if inflation is really you know rising quite steeply as it has been here and around the world, if you're in a situation where you can say, look, here are my costs, I need to make ten uh, percent profit on top of my costs, so that's my cost base plus that that's the price I'm going to charge. Only monopolies or duopolies or oligopolies can do that. If you're in a proper free market system, you really shouldn't have the power to do that. You should be a price taker. But instead, a lot of these companies are what we call price makers. Mm, Okay, so let me just put this in in an example. When I first got back to Australia about a year ago, I was paying $6 for the muesli I like. (laughs) Now I'm paying $8 Mm. for the muesli I like. And that's the same price in Coles as it is in Woolworths. But what you're sort of saying there, they're 
basing that price on what each other is doing to make a bit more of a profit. Yeah, look, you get the, the distinct impression that when you've got such uniformity of prices that they do have the power to determine what price they're going to charge. And, you know, as I was just explaining, in a normal commercial market, um, any uh, manufacturer or provider of services would just have to put their stuff out there in the market and see what price they can get. Obviously, they're going to try and get as much as they possibly can uh, and make as much profit as they possibly can. But if you're in this situation where you know, you're just one of two, uh, you know that you can. That the other lot had got the same motive as you and that you're going to go out there and you're going to figure out, well, it costs me $5 to put this to market and I need to make about a uh, dollar on the top of that to have a handsome profit. So therefore, the price is going to be six. Mm. Take it or leave it. Okay. So in, it's inflation plus the supermarkets wanting to make a bit of a profit of course they want to make a profit right on for their shareholders and they are making good profits at the moment, aren't they? Yeah, and look, what we've discovered or noticed through the, the most recent company reporting season, we did an analysis of uh, of what's known as the margins and that's the uh, difference between what you buy something at and what you're selling it at in the marketplace. The margins for many industries and companies that dominate those industries, the margins have actually expanded. They've actually managed in an inflationary environment where they're putting up the prices, they're actually act adding a little bit more margin to give themselves a bump of profit. And we've seen, you know, record profits for some industries in, in the late, latest, you know, reporting season. We saw it for the Commonwealth Bank. We saw it for Qantas. Mm. Uh, the food retailers have done extremely well. And both of them really expanded their margins and did so quite, uh, quite handsomely. I mean, Coles earnings surged 17% in the six months to the end of December. Uh, Woolworths notched up a 14% earnings improvement in the same period. At just under 8%. As consumers feel the pinch, the big two supermarkets are banking double-digit profits, with soaring prices at the checkout bolstering bottom lines. You know, that's way above uh, the inflation rate. So, you know, almost double, really. Mm. And so they're, they're doing quite well in this kind of environment. Now, they'll defend their, their positions and say that they're not price gouging, um, that they're really just trying to, that they're well aware of uh, the community pressures that are out there, but they are facing these mm. price pressures that, uh, themselves and increased costs. Absolutely not. We work on behalf of our customers to help them get the value they need to manage their everyday lives. We're acutely sensitive to this issue. What we are constantly uh, balancing in that process is what is the right value position that we want to have uh, for customers uh, versus how much we need to, to pass through uh, into, into price. But my point here is that that's fine. I mean, if you're facing increased costs in a normal capitalist economy, your costs might be you know rising. There's not much you can do about that as a manufacturer or as a retailer, but you've still got to just go out there and get the best price you can in the market. And only mm. somebody with a dominant position can go out there and say, well, my costs are rising, therefore yours will too. Mm, okay, so we can't stop retailers adding a bit extra to make a profit. But let's look at inflation then, Ian, because we're told that inflation has peaked. So when can we expect it to come down to a point where we go into the supermarket and things are a bit cheaper again? Uh, look, that's the... Nobody knows the answer to that. I mean, mm. the Reserve Bank is is saying that inflation will continue to moderate through this year and into next year. They want to get inflation down to that uh, band level that they're comfortable with. They've got a target of minimum of two and maximum of three. If we don't get on top of inflation, higher interest rates, more unemployment, more pain. We're still a long way off that. You know, inflation is not uniform, though. There are some things that are going up uh, quite steeply. There are other things that are starting to moderate. And then there are other factors coming in later that are going to keep those that overall basket uh, level still very high. Mm. And, you know, one of the, one of the ones that uh, is a real problem at the moment, of course, is rents. I guess you've only got to go out in the weekend and speak to a couple of people and you'll find a couple of young people who've been renting a place for $500 a week and suddenly the rent's now 700 750 I mean, it's, it's actually quite ridiculous the way rents have been going lately. 
And of course, rents are a pretty significant component of consumer price, consumer mm. prices and the consumer price index, which is the measure of inflation. So that is going to keep inflationary pressures higher, which means the Reserve Bank will probably continue to if not ease off on the interest rate hikes, at least keep interest rates mm. elevated for quite some time. Gosh, yeah, I was going to say, because we've been hit with 10 interest rate rises and surely consumer spending is slowing down a bit, but these rents are keeping things high, the inflation rate high still. What else is a problem with inflation? Well, power is the mm. big one. Um, you know, I mean, remember last year we were hit with, uh, you know, price rises in power of, of around about 18 plus percent in, in many markets across the country. And that is continuing on because uh, it's a delayed reaction with power. The price of coal has actually now halved. Mm. I think it peaked back in around about September and it's really, really fallen quite sharply since January. Gas prices as well have come right down as well in Europe, but it takes quite a while for those contract prices to work their way through the system. Uh, and so the, the national regulator is going to push through another round of uh, electricity price hikes this week of around about 20%. Mm, so that, again, will keep inflation, will the inflation fit quite high. So these are things that are outside the control of consumers and interest rates really act to reduce demand, higher interest rates to reduce demand. And it's it's not increased demand as such that has caused the problem. In many cases, it's reduced supply. And that's one of the real dangers of continuing to push up interest rates. You know, we, we've got supply shortages that have caused all these price rises and we're using interest rates which control demand to try and keep it in, in place. So, mm. you know, the danger of pushing the economy into recession is high and increasing, unfortunately. Mm, gosh, okay. So what does that all mean for Australian households then? I mean, if we were to be pushed into a recession, I mean, we all need a break right now. I think that's pretty clear. What does it look like in the months ahead, Ian? Uh, look, I think the Reserve Bank has finally woken up to the fact that we need to have a bit of a pause. We're going to get some jobs numbers this week. Uh, if they're not as strong as expected, I think there's a strong chance that the Reserve Bank will hold off from raising rates next month, depending on what these jobs numbers say to us this week. Mm, so it's some uh, expensive times ahead for households still, I think. Absolutely. Mm. Ian Verinder is the ABC's business editor. A recent finder survey of more than a thousand households found the cost of a weekly grocery shop has jumped 25% over the past year. Australia's annual inflation rate in January eased slightly to 7.4%. This episode was produced by Flint Duxfield, Sam Dunn and Chris Dengate, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is Stephen Smiley. I'm Sam Hawley. You can find all our episodes of the podcast on the ABC Listen app. Thanks for listening.